at Miss Madrigma Philippines takes on great responsibility working as a uh, global ambassadress and she must be shot quick on her feet and able to communicate with clarity, competency. Ladies, get ready because your answer will determine who makes it to their dream. Congratulations. Correct. Tonight's questions were written by some people who know you very well at this moment. The judges. <laughs> and of course, now we will read, of course, your question twice. You have your free time to deliver your answer. I'm sure all of you will do. I'd like to use the interpreter since all the questions are in English. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, candidate number 19. RB, congratulations, Anna. <laughs> okay, first, listen. I have three cards. Invisible three cards. <laughs> Since you were the first candidate to answer, you will be picking your question, and what you have picked will be the question for the rest. So, nakasalalay sa yo kung gano ka bonga ang final question. All right. RB, are you ready for that final question? Can you hear me? They didn't hear anything. All right. The final question is. The stigmatization of nonconformity to gender norms is so deeply embedded in the society and in institutions that it translates to policies, practices, and behaviors that restrict, punish, and abuse LGBTQIA plus people. In our country, no specific no specific and comprehensive national policy has been passed for the protection and promotion of the rights of LGBTQIA plus people. Similarly, there has yet to be a legislation which will give legal recognition to transgender people's gender identity, allow for their gender makers and a new name to be reflected in legal documents recognize them as parties to a legal union and eventually give them the rights as co-parents to a child. What can the Philippine government do to address this gap and better respect, protect, and fulfill the rights of LGBTQIA plus people as thinking, feeling, and living individuals? Thank you. I thought I was going to pick a card, but Okay, let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we LGBT community, we are one of the saddest individual in our country because we are the most marginalized individual in our country, Philippines. We are deprived in terms of our work jobs, in terms of having adoption, our rights, healthcare, and so many more. And I believe that we do have the capability to change the mindset of the leaders of our country. I am here standing in front of you. I joined several pageants, and my number one goal is when I, when I hold the mic, I always want that my voice will going to hit the heart of every single individual in the country. I am here standing in front of you telling that we should not deprive the right of the LGBT community. Whether you are a man, a woman, a part of the LGBT community, we are all the same. Drinking the same water, eating the same food, and living the same land called Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give an emphasis about how the government should address and solve this kind of problem. We need to pass the SOGI bill. SOGI is the number one, number one and very important key in order for us to promote equality. I know that equality is just an illusion because we are different to each other, but we can lessen the discrimination, the problem, if we keep fighting for it. I would like to say that Veni, Visi, Vedi, I came here, I saw, and I conquered. And no matter what, I will go into fight. I am a transgender mother, and I would like to show to every one of you that when you say love, there's no gender at all. And when you see privilege, it should be given to each and every single individual. And in order to solve, in order to achieve this, we need to fix our own community first. Because we cannot really attain happiness, respect, 
guaranteed and eradicate the, the, the deprive of our, of our existence here in our country if we keep fighting. So LGBT members, let's stop the competition. Let's love each one another. Let's stop hate. Let's be united in order for us to those people in the higher position that we, they will going to say that LGBT deserve to be respected, to be loved, and to be, to be given the equal opportunity. So I would like to end this Q&A portion. LGBT members, remember this. Nan desistas, nan exeris. Never stop, never surrender. Maayong gabi. Thank you so much, RBC! Thank you, candidate number 19. And of course, I would like to clarify the yeah. final question and answer, if I'm not mistaken, has no time limit, okay? That's no right. No time limit. And I love no time limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just joking. Candidate, okay. candidate number 13, Yuki Hu. <laughs> Yuki Ito. The invincible. Yeah, the invincible. <laughs> okay. Yuki Ito. Let's have the final question. It's yeah. a mouthful. Okay, are you ready? The final question is, I'll go for that. <laughs> the stigmatization of nonconformity to gender norms is so deeply embedded in the society and institutions that it translates to policies, practices, and behaviors that restrict, punish, and abuse LGBTQIA plus people in our country, no specific and comprehensive national policy has been passed for the protection and promotion of the rights of the LGBTQIA plus people. Similarly, there has yet to be a legislation which will give legal recognition to the transgender people's gender identity allow for the gender markers and new name or to be reflected in the legal documents, recognize them as parties to a legal union and eventually give them rights as co-parents to a child. What can the Philippine government do to address this gap and to better respect, protect, and fulfill the rights of the LGBTQIA plus people as thinking feeling, and living individuals. What can the Philippine government do to address this gap? Murder, yes. Protect and fulfill no time limit. <laughs> Small steps regarding these rights that we are fighting is already considered a big step. So upon reading this question, it only reminds me something that we are getting closer to what we deserve. Because do not forget that LGBT rights is human rights. And I think it's about time not just to protect, tolerate, or whatever it is. It's about time to understand what we are fighting for. Because at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, we will remain standing because we are a true mandirigma. Daghang salama. Thank you so much, Shuki Ito. Candidate number 13. 13. Yeah. Our next candidate, we will have candidate number 24, Kurt Fertadazo. Popular. Popular. <laughs> Kurt? Getting closer there. Really an exciting part. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Hello, beautiful girl. Gorgeous. Good, Good luck, Nash. Thank you so much. But before I proceed with my question yeah. and answer portion, I would just like to thank the people of General Santos City for the warm welcome and for giving us opportunity to be standing here in front of you. This journey will not be possible without the Miss Madrigma Philippines organization. And I am just so grateful to be here. And I hope that as I, as I stand here tonight, I will be your next Miss Mandirigma Philippines 2023. And of course, in that case, there's still a final question, Kurt. I want you now to turn around. The question is, 
The stigmatization of nonconformity to gender norms is so deeply embedded in a society, in its institutions, that it translates to policies, practices, and behaviors that restrict, punish, and abuse LGBTQIA plus people. In our country, no specific and comprehensive national policy has been passed for the protection and promotion of the rights of LGBTQIA plus people. Similarly, there has yet to be a legislation which will give legal recognition to transgender people's gender identity, allow for their gender markers and new name to be reflected in legal documents, recognize them as parties to a legal union, and eventually give them rights as co-parents to a child. What can the Philippine government do to address this gap and to be to better respect, protect, and fulfill the rights of LGBTQIA plus people as thinking, feeling, and living individuals. As a 21-year-old stunner, I have a fair share of experience having that doubts and bad experience because of our government's issues. We were not given the full support that we really need to be able to live in this life where we can be truly happy. And as a Miss Madarigma Philippines candidate standing here in front of you, I aspire to be the beacon of hope for the LGBTQ community members to stand up and fight for our rights. And our message to the government is that mind us, think about us, because we members of the LGBTQ community, we are still humans. We drink the same air, we breathe the same water, and we should be equal because we are created by God Almighty. And in His image, we are all equal. To the government, I think it's time. It's time to pass a SOGI bill and of course, promote a safe space for the LGBTQ community where we can freely express who we are in the society. There are three problems that we are facing right now. Number one is in our school system. Many transgender members are not that free when it comes to going to school because they are afraid of their hair to be cut and wearing men's uniform. Second, we are still addressed by our male's name and that makes us feel so uncomfortable. And lastly, we do not get the respect from people because the government is still not pushing for inclusivity despite the diversity, acceptance, and respect. Now, I stand here calling the attention of the government to please do something because we matter as you matter. So let's journey together and champion communities with our rights highly valued and voices clearly heard. Because as a Miss Mandirigma Philippines, I am here to be a warrior, not just to fight with you, but to fight for everyone else. Because just what the lyrics say, ikaw at ako ay mga mandirigma na lalaban patungo sa buhay at pag-asa. Daghang salamat, magandang Jensen! Thank you, Kirk Fritodazzo. Thank you. Next we'll have... Candidate number 24. Yeah, candidate number 30. I.R. John Radis. Number 30. Whew. It's getting <laughs> The girl. Yeah. She's a <laughs> Hi, girl. <laughs> Good luck. I saw your expression Thank a while so back. Much. And relax. <laughs> I saw your expression a while back. I want you now to, of course, focus on this final question. Good luck. Okay. To the level field. Okay. The final common question: the stigmatization of nonconformity to gender norms is so deeply embedded in the society and in institutions that it translates to policies, practices, and behavior that restrict, punish, and abuse LGBTQIA plus people. In our country, no specific and comprehensive national policy that has been passed for the protection and promotion of the rights of the LGBTQIA plus people. 
Similarly, there has yet to be a legislation which will give legal recognition to the transgender people's gender identity, allow for their gender markers and new name to be reflected in the legal documents, recognize them as parties to a legal union, and eventually give them rights as co-parents to a child. What? can the Philippine government do to address this gap and to better or better respect, protect, and fulfill the rights of the LGBTQIA plus people as thinking, feeling, and living individual? As we continue to exist in this biased world, all of us face a lot of adversities, challenges, obstacles, and hurdles along our journey towards our individual success. But we, the LGBT community, have faced not just the simple barriers, but we have struggled together with all the discrimination, alienation, persecution, and rejection. May it be in our workplace, in our schools, in our community, and even in our own families and churches. But aside the entire negative comment, we continue to stand tall for there is no more to life than being prejudiced of our very own sexual orientation. Because living life against all odds is the greatest challenge we've ever had. And accepting our sexuality is the greatest decision we've ever did. We continue to fight for our right amidst all of this judgment. And I hope that our government will be flexible enough to support on our fight for the equality that we deserve. Because this is the only thing that we can achieve a more inclusive and welcoming society for all of us. Always remember that we are all human beings. We deserve every protection, every care, and every right that we all deserve. And to all the local government that is here listening and watching me right now, please embrace and love the LGBT community because we are part of a human race. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to end up my answer by a very powerful word that describes the beginning of life, and that is love. Amor, Vincent Umbia. Love conquers all, and we should love one another as one Filipino, as one nation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harry Short Rannis. Number 30. Number of course, num candidate number 36, May Coppins. Yes, the lone yes. survivor from Cebu. The lone survivor from Cebu. <laughs> Good luck, May. Thank you. Are you okay? Okay, you have no choice, sir, Joey. Yeah. The final question? Yeah, I wish you all the luck. This is your final question. The final question is, the stigmatization of our non-conformity to gender norms is so deeply embedded in the society and in institutions that it translates to policies, practices, and behaviors that restrict, punish, and abuse LGBTQIA plus people in our country. No specific and comprehensive national policy has been passed for the protection and promotion of the rights of LGBTQIA plus people. Similarly, there is yet to be a legislation which will give a legal recognition to transgender people's gender identity, allow for their gender markers and a new name to be reflected in legal documents, recognize them as parties to a legal union, and eventually give them the rights as co-parents to a child. What can the Philippine government do to address the gap and to better respect, protect, and fulfill the rights of LGBTQIA plus people as thinking, feeling, and living individuals. No time limit, me. All right. Thank you so much for the wonderful question. I guess the question is really a bit tough for me. But ladies and gentlemen, I came from a very conservative family. My dad wants me to pursue to become a nautical in the near future. But I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be selfish to myself just to follow his dreams in life. 
I did my transition when I was 13 years old. And right now, standing in front of you is a big privilege for me as a young trans woman who can inspire a lot of people in our community. And with that question, I believe that if there is no law about our LGBT community, but I believe that there is only one thing that we want from our community. It's just the respect from us. Because we don't know about the stories of every individual from our community. Even though we've been discriminate, discriminated and being judged because of our gender. I always believe, according to Mother Teresa, that not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bay Commons. Thank you. That was a tough one. Yes. Like that. It's a mouthful question. Yeah. <laughs> Too hard.